Hello, I'm Timothy Perfit from Two Canoe Software, and I want to show you a quick tour of the new version of SD Clone, SD Clone 3. So one of the things that we've added a whole bunch of features in, features that we're using here inter internally, as well as features that folks have been asking for. Um, so the first thing you'll notice once you've opened up SD Clone 3 is that we got this new toolbar up top. Um, we wanted to bring out the, all the different features so people can see them. Um, and so I'll kind of go through uh, them by section. The first section are ones that you can operate on any of these sources or on, on, on any source volumes um, or source SD cards. Um, the second one is just uh, being able to manage this list and kind of find out where the images live. And then finally, there's, there's some additional um, uh, functionality and uh, some, some more in-depth functionality, which, is, which we'll get into. Um, so the, the, the uh, core feature of what SD Clone does is it allows you to download an image, an SD card image from the internet for maybe a Raspberry Pi or some other embedded processor, or even just uh, a, an image, uh, a disk image of, the, uh, of any SD card, and restore it so then you have an SD card locally or the, with you that will have that exact image on it. Um, so one of the ways we did is normally the procedure is if you wanted to download an image, you would go to some place like raspberrypi.org and download that image, and then you would drag it onto the sources. And we still fully support that. Um, so for example, here is a Raspbian Jesse image I can drag over and put in here, and it will uh, um, allow me to select it and then insert an SD card and restore that. And so that's a very convenient way to, to just grab any kind of arbitrary image off the internet. So. Um, but we've added, we've improved on that with SD Clone 3 um, in this Image Central. So we've added in um, some pre-configured images that are still downloaded from the original sites on the internet, but they uh, make it very convenient so you don't have to go to a web browser, kind of find where they are, and, 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 uh, and then drag them into the interface. You just basically click one button. So, for example, the same operation I just did, I can see that here is the Raspbian, Raspbian Jesse Lite. On, on November 25th, if I click on Get Image, it'll go out and it'll automatically download that image. And once that image is downloaded, it'll add it to the sources. So uh, we'll let that finish, and then I'll come back and show you how I can restore it to a card. All right, so now the image is downloaded, and it's been added to the sources column. And it's calculating the actual size of the, um, uh, the file system that it'll need to be restored to. So you can see that I need an SD card of at least 1.39 gigabytes, which is fine because I have an SD card here of, of it's an 8 gigabyte uh, SanDisk, I believe, SD card. Um, you can see if you hover over this, it has a tool tip that tells me how much space it actually takes on the, on the, uh, on the disk, uh, which is, I believe, yeah, 307 uh, megabyte. So I'll insert this and I will click on the image and I'll click on the SD card media reader or uh, reader media that I, just ins that I just inserted and I'll restore. So just like that I went from going, oop, got to put my credentials in correctly. I went from wanting to be able to uh, do something with my Raspberry Pi, going to Image Central and downloading an image and now it's creating that SD card. Once it's done, I can remove that SD card from my Mac, put it in my Raspberry Pi, and it'll boot up, and I'll be up and operational. So it's a very quick way to, to download an image and get up and running. That's not the only image that we've uh, provided. So there's other images on here. There's, there's some projects that I'm going to be um, talking about more in different videos and blog posts um, that, talk, uh, that will kind of go through each one of these different projects. Um, but just to give you an idea, there's this thin client, which basically allows you to connect up to a Windows server from your Raspberry Pi. RetroPie, which is like a video game machine. Um, so you can easily download the image, boom, put it onto an SD card, and you're up and running um, as a video game machine. Pi Music Box is one of my favorite ones. You can get up and running and stream some, something like Soma FM, NPR, BBC, or even uh, Spotify. Um, and then there's uh, some uh, media, another media center, uh, the uh, Plex uh, client as well, which is another personal media server, uh, and full page OS. So what we're going to do is we're going to be updating these and kind of talking about uh, how the images can get you to get real good value out of your Raspberry Pi very quickly. So the idea is that you open up, 
SD clone and you can uh, go right to the uh, uh, grab the image and download it put in your sources so while that's writing the uh, the SD card let me talk a little bit about some of the other options that we have um, we've we've brought about the uh, reveal and finder out to the toolbar so if I want to find out where this image actually was saved I can click on reveal and finder and you can see it opens up a finder window and shows me hey it's it's located on my desktop here so that's that's very convenient um, another another uh, option is videos and what this does um, this video as well as others will be posted on our YouTube channel um, so this one will take uh, will open up a link and take you right to uh, that channel so you can see uh, different videos about different aspects of uh, uh, of SD Clone 3. Okay, so that's just finishing up. Uh, oh, it's, it's got another uh, like 2% left to be able to do that. Um, so it's uh, restored to that one. And now, now what it's doing is it's actually expanding the uh, partition or the, uh, yeah, the last partition, the Linux partition, so that when you boot up in your Raspberry Pi, the, the system will have access to all the data on the SD card. So it doesn't matter if you were to restore this to a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig SD card, it would expand it um, so you'd have access, the OS would have access to all that space that's available. We'll let that finish, um, and then I'll show you a couple other features. All right. It's completed, and you can see that I now uh, I have this SD card that it's the use space and media size. So it's an 8 gig card, and it's using all of, all of the 8 gigs. Um, so I will eject it and remove the uh, SD card from my Mac. And now I can take out this micro SD card, put it into my Raspberry Pi 3, and boot it up, and I can start hacking. All right. A um, couple other features. Let me uh, insert this SD card back in. Um, one of the nice features, if you if you actually lock the card, so I lock the card and I put it in. You can see we have a, now a visual indicator that it's locked. So you can see that under destinations, if I were to select an image, I can no longer select that destination, or I never could select it in SD Clone 2. But now it has this nice visual indicator. Um, another new option is the restore to disk image. So if I have this image, uh, the 2016 Raspbian and Jesse Light image, and I want to actually look on, on uh, what data is actually on there, or I wanted to do some operations like shrink or expand the file system, I could just simply select that, select restore to disk image, give it uh, a name, and it'll re actually restore that uh, source, that image, onto a disk image, and then mount it, and you can go ahead and do operations on that, and then create a new image of it, or uh, or yeah, create a new image of it and then restore it to an SD card. So this is something that you could be done before, um, but it was uh, uh, you had to use a lot of different utilities to do it. We put it right into SD clone and made it very convenient. So there's the disk image, and so if I go if I go over to computer, you can see that it's mounted this disk image, and uh, it has all the files on it that I want. And if I eject it, you can see that it'll eject that volume as well. Um, and then uh, it'll unmount that disk image. If I ever wanted to mount it again, I can always double click on it in the finder. Um, one of the most exciting features that, that we've added in SD Clone 3 is the ability to verify an SD card. And so one of the, um, one of the issues that you have when you buy SD cards from, um, you know, from Amazon or for other locations where you're not sure that it's coming directly from the manufacturer, that it's possible you're getting counterfeit cards. And the counterfeiters have gotten very sophisticated in ways that they can trick um, people that are trying to figure out if it's, if it's uh, counterfeit or not. And also, we want to be able to check an SD card just to make sure that uh, maybe there's some manufacturing defects or there's some issues with the card because maybe over time um, or uh, usage, it's in wear and tear that it's not as, uh, as, as resilient as it was before. So one of the uh, features of SD Clone 3 is the Verify SD Card. So, um, so let me select it, and I'll click on Verify SD Card and go ahead and kick it off. And so now it's generated that data and it's writing it through the entire card. So it's going to write eight gigabytes of data and then read it back. Um, and it writes a, a completely different set of data each time. And this is, this is a, a very complete way to do it because um, there, if you wrote 
uh, if you some other ways to verify it is if you wrote a bunch of files to it, what uh, counterfeit, counterfeit SD cards will do is they will overwrite old data. So even though you wrote a bunch of new files, you could read those back and they would all be successful, but it would corrupt old data that you might not be aware of until later on. So the way that SD clone um, 3 copes with that is it generates a, a data set that dynamically generates a data set and writes it through the all the use space on the SD card, and then goes back and rereads all that data and verifies that it's the exact same data that it was written. Um, and so this way you know that it's, it's a very solid way to uh, verify this SD card. And if there's any errors, it'll report that it'll fail. Um, I've had, I personally have had a bunch of these um, counterfeit SD cards, and what happens is once you start writing data to um, places where it, uh, has corruption, basically the, the card becomes unusable. Um, so it's a great way to have confidence in your cards um, uh, by using the Verify SD card uh, feature. So I'll let this run. Uh, it takes, uh, it can take for this 8 gig card that's uh, type 10, it can take 20 or 25 minutes to do it because it is very complete, but it does val verify that it, that it works really well. Um, Thank you very much for watching. Uh, there's some other features as well uh, for SD Clone 3 that you'll want to check out. Um, and so uh, follow us on the, on the uh, YouTube channel um, as well as head over to twocanoes.com and um, check out the, the new product page for SD Clone 3 and um, give us any feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much.